So hey gardeners, welcome back. So today's video is all about what to do prior to a hurricane. If you have an extensive garden, and if you guys follow my channel, you know that I have a very extensive garden. So prepping for these storms is just part of living in Florida. And so I wanna share a few tips that I do and help to help kind of keep, um, keep the damage pretty minimal. So um, the very first thing that I do is I walk through this garden several times um, prior to the storms. It's nice and quiet now, right before all of the weather starts to hit. This is a great time to just kind of walk through your garden, see if there's any, any kind of loose material, any brown limbs, anything that might become a projectile um, you know, throughout the storm. It's also a great idea to get kind of release some of those limbs off of the trees because as I say that, here comes the rain, but to release those limbs off of the trees because um, you, want, you want airflow to really hit those trees. Now, when I have um, more compact trees like um, gardenias, bottle brush trees, hibiscus, bougainvilleas, things that have more of a thicker, denser canopy head and have more of a slender trunk, that I give those guys a severe haircut prior to a storm because, and, and sometimes I'll even cut a little gaps in them. So this is the time to give your, <laughs> to really experiment with your cutting. You can give them as ugly bangs as they need just because it's gonna help get them through the storm. They will flush back out, they will be beautiful, but the last thing that you want is that, that canopy to be so dense and so thick that um, it snaps that trunk. So it, it turns into a sail if it doesn't have, if it can't allow air to pass through it. So the goal is, is to really open that tree up the best that you can, um, you know, it, even if it's green. And I, and I know normally I say that with palm trees, don't cut it if it's still green. But in this case, even some of those lower limbs that are hanging, go ahead and trim those off. And I'll give you some, some insight of what I do um, just before the storm hits that's gonna help protect it and just after the storm hits to, to help them rebound from that kind of stress. Um, the next thing I do, um, and this is not necessarily in the garden, but I think it's very, very important to mention, is um, I, I clean out my gutters. So this past weekend, I went through and cleaned out my gutters and um, really kind of got any kind of leaf debris, anything out of there and really made sure that I had a lot of, um, you know, I had, I had good drainage going on. You know, my house is pretty level. I'm just on a slight incline. For those of you guys who have a nice, nice raise, then you might not have to worry about it so much. But you wanna make sure that all of that water that um, Milton is gonna bring really exits um, along the foundation of the house line. So you kinda wanna push that water out. So you wanna have it nice and clean. So I ran a hose down my gutter, make sure everything was nice and flushed and clean. And then while I was up there, I, I cleaned my gutters, didn't realize how stained they were when I was there. But anyway, so so that's an optional thing to do while you're while you're cleaning your gutters for the storms. Um, the um, the next thing I do is all of my big trees, anything that's you know that, that might needs extra securing, anything that might be real close to the house, maybe it was newly planted. I've done this for my clients in the past. I'll make sure that Bryce puts up a um, a video clip of that going up. But we stake them with wood. So any new trees that you have or any trees that are close to your pool screen or your house that that are maybe tall and kind of you know a little shaky go ahead and stake them um, better to be safe than sorry so what we use is two by fours to to brace along them so we kind of just dig out the edges a little bit brace three to four two by two by fours depending on the size of the tree go all the way around the tree we take and cut off about 10 inches of that two by four and place it around the base of the tree around the trunk of the tree to kind of help protect the tree itself and that allows us to be able to screw in the angled two by fours that we put up against it so you can just use wood screws to to kind of angle that in and protect the tree and then finally We'll, we'll do two rack, ratchet straps on each tree. Um, just because there's so much vibration during those storms, especially if we get hurt or tornadoes come through, um, you wanna make sure those ratchet straps are gonna, just gonna seal the deal of making sure that those, those braces stay into place. So I, I'll get Bryce to kind of you know, put what that looks like. Um, maybe even a clip of the guys um, installing those for us but um, it's really it's it's that's an ideal thing to do now if your trees are 12 foot and smaller then you can usually use just the strapping material and some rebar it's the same kind of concept it's just more of the pressure kind of pulls it to the side angle in those rebar pieces and then um, strap it to the center of the tree and you can just kind of wrap it around and kind of tie, tie a knot to it. Again, I'll, I'll post a picture of what that looks like. Um, but that really allows that tree to um, kind of give it some extra support in the trunk. And that's kind of what we're trying to do is protect the trunk of the tree. Um, on those trees, the reason why we don't use the wood stakes on those is because the last thing that we want to do is the tree to stay upright, but the tree was so weak because it's still young that the tree breaks in half. So you, it's better for the tree to actually go 
over if it's a young tree versus um, being held up by wood stakes. So those other stakes are going to be just enough support to kind of help it through some of the some of those winds, but not so much if the wind really comes through and pushes it over, then you know, it's better that way than to snap the tree itself. The big trees, however, those, those can handle it because they have such a heavy trunk. So that's why we use the two by fours. I hope that makes sense. So, um, so definitely go ahead and stake those trees. This is the time to do it as we know that the storm is approaching. So the very next thing that I do, and um, as we have time right before the storm comes, this is a great time to fertilize. You know, these trees, these plants are all gonna have stress during this storm. So giving them a, a little bit of a replenishment is an ideal thing to do. We're gonna have lightning. We're gonna have tons and tons of rain with this storm. So go ahead and get, this is the time, and I'm doing that right now while I'm filming this video, but it's, now's the time to go ahead and hit all of your trees with a nice fertilizer. You can use a slow release fertilizer. I use palm gain for mine, but you know, any kind of really good fertilizer for your palms and your plants, this is a great time to go ahead and do it and let it dissipate as this, this uh, storm comes through. Um, the, the next thing I do would be after the storm. So after the storm, I would add, if you have like a Chemlon company or a pest control company, or you know, anybody who kind of does that, that normal for your for your service for your yard go ahead and have them come out and spray a fungicide it should be part of your treatment um, and then go ahead and have them do a pesticide treatment as well because when your trees and your plants have been battered by wind there's breakage there and anywhere there's breakage you know there's stress on the plant and the tree and the bugs just to come running or flying um, when that happens so to prevent an infestation on weak material go ahead and hit it with a pesticide now I I treat my own garden and I know a lot of you guys do too. I use Bifen IT and I will just spray my entire garden with that to, um, to kind of just protect it. And I'll do that twice. I'll do that right after the storm. And then as things dry out a little bit, I'll hit it again. So um, you're not gonna hurt anything. You're not gonna burn anything. It's just a great um, one ounce for a gallon. And then I use um, about five gallons uh, in a sprayer on this area. You can use a hose in sprayer. Maybe I'll get Bryce to put up a picture of what that looks like. But um, yeah, th those kind of things really help protect and bounce back. So many times, I think I did a tour not too long after um, one of the hurricanes that came through here. It may have been a tropical storm. And I got so many comments that I cannot believe your garden didn't receive much damage. And I do that after a storm every time. I fertilize prior and I, um, I do a pesticide treatment after, and I can just see the rebound happen very, very quickly. So I do get damaged, but it does pop back. I hope these tips help. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the rain now. So um, you guys be safe, take care of each other. If there's, if there's anything that you guys have done and that you've had really good success with it in preparing for the storm, please leave it in the comments down below. I'll be sure to pin it, because um, kind of we're all in this together. And I, I know we all put so much time and effort into our gardens. And I, you know, I know we all hate it when these storms come and we're just looking at the devastation that's possible in these beautiful places that we've created. So, so I'm right there with you. I am, um, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to make the best of it. So I hope these tips help and I will see you guys in the very next video. Stay safe, y'all.